Hey everyone, welcome back to the show where we check out some of the best looking new PC game releases. This one for the month of June 2022. You know, I thought this was going to be a rough month, but you know what? It's actually not looking so bad after all. We got a fast paced futuristic 60 player FPS where you can ride hoverboards of all things. There's the PC version of Diablo Immortal, or as I like to call it, Diablo 3.5 pay to win edition. That's not gonna win me any points. <laughs> ESO has its major yearly chapter releasing this month. Space Tarkov is coming. This game is quite fun. I like it a lot, actually. On top of that, we got a cinematic horror game, an old school style RTS. Yes, the genres still exist. And the first major update for Outriders, my favorite game that nobody else likes. And we'll wrap up that list with a bonus rapid fire round of six other games also coming out this month. At first glance, yeah, June looked to be an awful month. I wasn't even sure I was gonna put a list together. But upon reflection, I like it. Like we got some good looking stuff coming out. There's some good stuff happening here. We're gonna get right into that after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, the compact, durable wallets designed to help streamline what you carry. I've had one for a while and I've really enjoyed it over the wallets I've used in the past. It's quite a bit more compact than what I had previously, taking up a lot less space. On top of that though, it's got a bunch of other nice features and benefits. It can hold up to 12 cards while still having room for cash. It's got RFID blocking tech to help protect against digital pickpocketers, offered in 30 different colors and styles, made of durable materials, and it has a 45-day risk-free trial and lifetime warranty. So to learn more and check out Ridge Wallet for yourself, head over to ridge.com force or use the link in the description below. And in celebration of Father's Day, they've increased the available discount from 10 to 15%, which you can get by using the code force at checkout. Okay, kicking us off this month is Leap, a fast-paced online multiplayer FPS featuring epic battles with up to 60 players. They have been very clear that this is not a battle royale, rather it is a large-ish scale objective-based multiplayer game. Working together with your teammates, you'll use powerful weapons and unique class abilities, traverse the terrain quickly with grappling hooks, jetpacks, and various vehicles as you complete objectives and fight other players attempting to seize victory. Traversal plays a big role here. You can dash, charge, or use the grapple hook to attach to any object in the environment, reaching greater heights. Everyone's also got their own personal vehicle like hoverboards, robots, floats, or mechanical moose. There's a variety of different vehicles that you can use that will basically just let you quickly cover distances and close the gap. Abilities, every single exosuit comes with its own unique abilities like you can call in an orbital laser to wipe out a group of players or throw down a support shield to take temporary cover. And speaking of exosuits, the game does feature classes. Each exosuit has unique uh, equipment, powerful weapons, and superhero inspired abilities. There's the Pathfinder, a great all-arounder, effective for handling most combat situations. The Titan, a heavily armored class equipped with a jetpack that can fly in the skies, raining fire on those below. The Wraith is all about stealth and agility gameplay. They come equipped with long-range weapons and can vanish. And then there's the Tech Ops, a support healer and defending character. They've got teammate repair abilities and can even drop automated turrets to defend positions. There's also gonna be some customizations. You can customize your mercy scenario with helmet emojis, LOL, so random, and uh, distinct skin options for exosuits, vehicles, and weapons, and you'll have the ability to flaunt and taunt enemies. Leap launches into Steam Early Access on June the 1st. It is not going to be free to play, although there isn't a price listed as of this recording. This seems cool, maybe a little janky, a little stiff from what I saw of some of the early playtest gameplay, but nevertheless, it is a new team-based multiplayer hero shooter. It looks kind of neat. Diablo Immortal takes the baseline of Diablo 3 and essentially does a total overhaul to the game and its world while also adding various new features. So this is called the biggest Diablo game to date with a massive amount of game space, a main story quest that explores eight different zones, and the game's story is set between the events of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. The game's gonna have its own version of raids, these large-scale boss battles with that can uh, support up to eight players. There are six different characters classes, the Barbarian, Crusader, Demon Hunter, Monk, Necromancer, and Wizard, and Immortal is also an MMORPG, which means you will be running into other players on a regular basis out in the open world as you're doing events and quests, fighting world boss,
bosses and even just hanging out in town. Now, as you can see though, from the visuals and the character classes and a lot of these abilities, this is basically Diablo 3.5, but built for mobile. And that's the key thing to realize here. This is a phone game. And as a phone game, I think Immortal looks great. It's probably one of the better looking phone games I've ever seen. In fact, I played it briefly a couple of years ago at BlizzCon and I didn't think it was bad at all. In fact, I'm fairly confident mobile gamers are getting a top tier mobile game experience. However, as a PC game and compared to other PC ARPGs, I'm a little less confident that this is going to be a great experience. Now, they've done a few things to support the PC version. They've added mouse and keyboard support, letting you pick between click and WASD movement. There's also controller support. They've scaled the user interface and HUD to make it a little bit smaller, made some menu interface changes, added chat, and that's about it. Again, pretty unimpressed with the footage that they've shown so far of the PC version. It just doesn't look like a good PC ARPG, but a phone game that you can play on the PC if that's something you want. And by all accounts, that's all they were looking to do. They just wanted to give a PC version of the game. I just really want to set expectations. Don't think you're getting an extension of Diablo 3 really, or the next great PC ARPG. Realize you're getting a phone game that you can play on PC. Could it still be fun and enjoyable? It's certainly a possibility and I'm going to be checking it out for sure. But I should note as well that since Immortal was originally designed as a free to play mobile exclusive game, it is loaded with microtransactions. Based on the early testing and blog post detailing monetization, we know that the game's gonna have three different currencies. There'll be gold that you find in game, platinum, which can be purchased with real money or by selling items on the market to other players who bought it with real money. And then there are eternal orbs, which can only be bought with real money and cannot be acquired any other way. Now with those currencies, you'll be able to purchase a various items and boosts. It's looking fairly certain that the game is gonna fall under several definitions of pay to win. The biggest concern from what I've seen is the fact that you are able to outright purchase power via these legendary gems that provide you with buffs to your health and damage that non-paying players simply will not be able to obtain in any reasonable matter. This stuff can be balanced and stuff over time and hopefully they make adjustments but I'm just not holding my breath. I am gonna try the PC version of Diablo Immortal, but from all we've seen, I'm keeping expectations very low. I do not expect this to live up to the likes of Diablo 3 or Path of Exile or Grim Dawn or Last Epoch or any other decent PC ARPG. Diablo Immortal will be entering the beta for the PC version on June 2nd, and it is going to be free to play because of course it is. High Isle is the latest major chapter update for the Elder Scrolls Online. This adds new zones, the islands of High Isle, as well as Aminos and a handful of smaller islands. There will be new delves, public dungeons, and world bosses, as well as a whole bunch of standalone side quests, new world events called fissures, there's a new main story quest line. They've added an in-game collectible card game called Tales of Tribute. And then of course, there will be new 12 player trials, new five man dungeons. There's two new companions and various other updates and quality of life improvements have been made. Now I did get some hands-on time with this game last month and I thought it was okay. I'm not talking about ESO, but specifically this chapter update. And that's kind of the thing. Like one of these things that we say with every yearly update is, hey, they're adding more ESO. But this one in particular, more so than ever, has just kind of fallen flat for me. It feels a little bland. It really just didn't hook me at all. For example, the volcanic events, which are the new world events, they are basically dolmens, but with a different skin, with a different presentation. They're this event that just happens. You fight back waves of basic enemies, a few elite enemies, and then it all ra wraps up with a big boss battle. It's just presented differently from the dolmen invasions in the base game. And the newest major feature of this card game I just didn't think was particularly interesting. I tried to play it for like an hour and a half and I really didn't like it. I can't imagine that I would spend any of my time in ESO doing this. And this is the thing. I like ESO. Like I recommend the game to people who like MMOs. You should play this at least once. Give it a real shot. But this chapter in particular is just pretty low on my list of recommendations. I wasn't inspired by the zones, the theme, the setting, or any of the new features. I just liked a lot more many of the other chapter updates. 
updates like the Skyrim update and the Morrowind update like I thought those were great if you're gonna play ESO and buy anything check out some of those chapters before you check out this would be my recommendation but for the hardcore dedicated players this is more stuff to see and do in ESO so it's good for what it is High Isle will be launching on June 8th for $39.99 the Cycle Frontier is a session based PvPVE survival game this is often referred to as Space Tarkov as it has a lot of similarities with the basic gameplay loop. You start off by picking out a loadout, what you want to bring with you into a match. Then you drop onto the map, you search around for loot, do side quests, try to collect things, do objectives, make some money, find some loot, and try to extract without dying in the process. There are different kinds of threats. There are PvE threats, all sorts of different alien creatures all over the map. But then there's also the PvP threats, the other players on the map who can find and kill you and take all of your stuff. This is a basically a full loot game with the exception of like the safe pocket. Anything you're carrying will be looted off your corpse if you die. Now there's a few things I really enjoy about this game. I love the overall gameplay loop. The threat of other players I feel like adds this fun tension to it all as you drop in and try to collect loot and complete objectives. There are even some events like things like puzzles and locked doors, meteor showers and thunderstorms. These help diversify the flow of a match and mix things up a bit. And I felt like the immersion of this game with this huge focus on the audio experience and trying to listen for all the different sounds around you was really, really just super immersive and really enjoyable. But there were a few things when I played it that I found very frustrating, like the fact that when I played solo, I was constantly grouped up against squads, which was very difficult challenge to overcome, but made even harder by the fact that gear balancing seems way out of whack, or it just super super vital. Like if you have some basic gear and you're playing against someone with higher rarity gear, like purple gear, they're going to smoke you unless you totally outplay them. But that becomes a lot harder if it's just you versus multiple geared people. So between the solos and squads and the gear balancing, there was just some frustration in those different combinations. And having multiple games go really poorly and losing all your stuff uh, match after match, I found really frustrating. And all of this is made infinitely worse by the presence of hackers, which even in the early playtest, there were some there. I can't imagine it's going to be any better at launch. Overall, though, I think it's a great game. Like, I really enjoy it. It's fun. I love the gameplay loop pick my gear, equip it, drop, go around looting, fighting and hiding, dealing with other players, and try to survive long enough to extract. Coming away with a big win feels absolutely great in this game, but on the, on the flip side, losing all our stuff feels really, really rough, and hopefully they just balance out that experience. But overall, I like this game. I had a fun time playing, and I would like to play it some more. So you can actually start playing The Cycle Frontier on June the 8th. This is when it'll be entering preseason, and then after a couple of weeks on June 22nd, they're going to start season number one. It is a free-to-play game with microtransactions. The Quarry is a multiplayer horror game. It's made by the same developer that made Until Dawn, Little Nightmares, and Man of Medan. The game takes place in late summer in the remote forest of upstate New York, and you take the role of the teen counselors of Hackett's Quarry spending your final night at camp. No kids are there, no adults, and no rules. Just some summer camp teen shenanigans going on. <laughs> so as you play, you will control the fates of all nine camp counselors as their party plans unravel into an unpredictable night of horror with life or death decisions. The choices you make will determine how the story unfolds. In this game, they say, as in a lot of these games, that every choice, big or small, will shape your story and determine who lives and dies. Some of these choices will just be like communication choices, dialogue options. Others will are more like quick time events that you'll have to time properly. And much like like Until Dawn, your choices will affect the story. However, this time you can have up to seven friends online or locally also vote on the decisions being made. It's got adjustable difficulty for all the different gameplay elements. And there's also movie mode where if you prefer to just watch instead of actually playing, you can basically select from a variety of different variables and options and then sit back and watch the whole thing play out as just like it were a movie. This one also features real actors like Until Dawn did, David Arquette as 
Chris, Ariel Winter as Abigail. Quarry will be launching on June 10th for $59.99 for the base version. There's also a deluxe version available as well. Uh, although I will say it seemed like upon first glance that the deluxe version exclusively had this movie mode. I hope I just misunderstood what I was reading though, because that would be kind of junky if the base version of the game doesn't have one of like your primary selling point features. Not a good move. Starship Troopers Terran Command is a classic real-time strategy game. I am pumped that they are still making these. It's a RTS set in the universe of Starship Troopers. It features an immersive storyline campaign featuring unique missions, characters, and a whole lot of Starship Troopers flavor. There are a dozen of unique units, each with their own special abilities. You'll control groups of units, move them in different formations, issue different commands. Units will level up as they gain experience, and then this unlocks new abilities that they can use. There is terrain elevation and true line of sight, uh, as well as true line of fire. All of this combines to provide this deep tactical gameplay as you manage your units and their positions. You'll build up a supply, construct buildings, call in new units from orbit, manage a fleet of dropships, expand your base infrastructure, and capture strategic positions to strengthen your forces and unlock new weaponry. And lastly, the game features heroics, explosions, gore, and lots and lots of bugs. It's just an RTA. It looks like an R. It feel like I'm stepping in a time machine. It's kind of hilarious. An RTS of this kind of design and the way this thing looks. It does look a little smaller scale and that is reflected in the price evidently because this game will be launching on June 16th and it costs $29.99. And lastly for this month's list is Outriders World Slayer. The first major expansion for this game adds a new campaign, zones, enemies, loot, and several new progression and end game systems. The new campaign features the anomaly as it has continued to evolve, progressing the original story into new avenues and introducing a new big bad enemy to take out. There are new zones, including frozen tundras and swamps, as well as new types of enemies, brand new loot between weapons and new legendary armor sets. There's the addition of the PAX class tree that adds two new subclass branches for every base class. The ascension system, this new end game progression where you will increase your stats. This is kind of meant as a long-term goal spread out over hundreds of hours of playtime. And then there are the apocalypse tiers and gear. These replace challenge tiers. They scale the difficulty for better rewards. And apocalypse gear adds a third mod slot as well as the addition of brand new mod types coming to the game. This is a pretty massive change when it comes to customization and playing with different gear and builds. And then finally, there is a new end game coming. They are calling this the true end game. However, this was only teased in the footage so far, nothing, uh, no details or official information about what exactly this is going to entail. They say that Outriders World Slayer is built for existing and new players. The new campaign will be picking up right after the original. It can be started with a new level 30 boosted character as well, or you can go back and replay the base game first if you want to. And they are developing this with long-term progression in mind. I quite enjoy Outriders. I really like the game, although I did max out relatively quickly, running out of things to grind for and do after about 60 hours, which 60 hours is a lot of time, but people expect a bit more when it comes to loot grind games like this. And I would say that in general, Outriders could use some more variety with their end game content. Uh, hopefully this expansion will be adding that. Outriders World Slayer it releases on June 30th for $39.99. So those are the bulk of the games, the ones that I think are the best, most interesting looking. We got a uh, rapid fire section here for all of the other things coming out this month though. Mad Shot is a fast paced acrobatic roguelite shooter. It features a combination of procedurally generated and handcrafted levels. You'll survey the map, choose your best path, explore and uncover secrets, choosing between a multitude of weapons and masks to switch up your play style and fight your way through legions of horrifying creatures and multi-phase boss battles. This launches on June 9th. There's a free demo available right now on Steam. Fall Guys is going free to play on June 21st. So if you have been interested in Fall Guys in the past and didn't feel like biting the bullet for the cost, you can play it for free later this month. Madison is a first person psychological horror game. With the help of an instant camera, you will attempt to connect the human world with the beyond, solve puzzles, explore your surroundings, and try to survive. This launches on June 24th. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. This almost made my list, but I'm still enveloped in Monster Hunter World, so I haven't even tried this one yet. But yeah, Sunbreak will be adding new locations, enemies, abilities for all 14 weapons, new story, new characters to Monster Hunter Rise. Pretty big addition of stuff, it looks like. This comes out on June 30th for $39.99. 
Project Warlock 2 is coming this month, no date yet. Uh, this is the sequel to the Retro Boomer Shooter, pretty cool. There's a free demo available on Steam. And then finally, Neverwinter is getting an expansion called Dragon Slayer, which adds the Dragon Hunt system with new battles, challenges, and rewards. This also releases in June, but no specific date as of yet. And with that, that will wrap up this month's list. We've got tons of announcements coming this month, though. Be aware, we, between Summer Games Fest and all of the other events and showcases taking place in June, expect us to learn about new games, but we may, may even get some surprise releases. Anything's possible. I still remember, like, when Apex Legends was revealed and then just released instantly. I would love if more games that we don't even know about yet come out this month. Either way, it's going to be a pretty exciting month, and I am pretty happy. Like, really, I almost didn't do this month's list. I was so close because upon initial glance, it just seemed like there wasn't much coming. But after diving in, including like expansions and updates and stuff, there's some cool stuff. There's some cool early access games coming out. All in all, it's going to be some fun stuff to play this month. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys, as always, so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.